Today's another one of our seller strategy masterclasses where we're gonna go deep this time into advertising. I'm gonna teach you how to do day partying and how to manage all of your bid suggestions just in seconds instead of hours. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. How can you get more buyers to leave you Amazon product reviews? By following up with them in a way that's compliant with Amazon terms of service. You can use Helium 10 follow-up in order to automatically send out Amazon's request a review emails to any customers you want. Not just that, but you can specify when they get the message and even filter out people that you don't want to get that message, such as people who have asked for refunds or maybe ones that you gave discounts to. For more information, visit h10.me forward slash follow-up. You can sign up for a free account or you can sign it up for a platinum plan and get 10% off for life by using the discount code SSP10. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Serious Sellers Podcast by Helium 10. I'm your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is the show that's a completely BS-free, unscripted, and unrehearsed organic conversation about serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the e-commerce world. And today is another one of our seller strategy masterclass that we do once a month where we go deep into tool use, all right? So this is going to be using uh, Atomic by Helium 10. Now, whether you use Atomic or not, these are principles and strategies that you should be using whether you do your own PPC, whether you're using another software, whether you're using an agency, you know, you need to be checking up that they're doing on this stuff. But this is this is going to be important for for listeners, no matter what stage of the game you guys are at. Now, for me, you know, you, some of you guys know my story. I hated PPC in the beginning. You know, when I was launching hundreds of products for my my clients before I worked at Helium 10, I was like hands off on PPC. I'm like, I don't want to learn this stuff. This stuff is like way above me, you know, like. I'm just going to focus on launch, listing optimization, keyword research, product research, stuff like that. Somebody else, please handle the PPC. And then when I started selling myself, you know, after I started working at Helium 10, I'm like, okay, I need to finally figure out how to do PPC. In the beginning, it was rough. You know, I was you know, having to download all these spreadsheets and I didn't know how to do pivot tables and, and all, you know, V lookups and all this stuff. And then finding the campaigns in Seller Central and the ad groups, it was just like a mess. And then that was right around the time that ads, Helium 10 ads came out, which is the predecessor to Atomic. And then I was like, okay, finally now, you know, something that, that helps me to learn PPC makes sense. And now, you know, I'm running over 200 campaigns, probably closer to 300 now, uh, all using this software. So I'm just going to be going over some of the, the, the strategies using Atomic. I'm going to be showing, sharing my screen, those of you watching on YouTube. But again, don't tune out, even if you don't use Atomic, because these are strategies that hopefully you guys are using and, you know, it's important, I think, in order to run efficient PPC. And, and I'll, I'll tell you guys right now, those of you who are newer sellers, if you're one of those people who's like, oh, yeah, I need I need a consultant, I need an agency, and you're new, no, guys, please stop with that nonsense, all right? Very important to understand how PPC works yourself before you ever even dream about outsourcing it, all right? Now, hey, if you, if you get to be too big and, you know, you can't do everything yourself, of course, you need to hire people, maybe outsource some things here or there. But that's after knowing how to do it yourself. Because think about it. How, how could you hire somebody and be able to judge what they're doing and and their output and make sure that your ROI, you know, what you're investing to, to pay this company is is working out if you don't even know what is good PVC strategy and what is bad. So so anyways, just just keep that in mind. It's one of my pet peeves I see in the Facebook group. You guys can do it yourself if, if you're new, for sure, as long as you have the right strategies. And that's what we're talking about today. All right. So like with all seller strategy masterclasses, how I do this is I just give you guys like problems to solve. And then I'm going to show you how to solve it. All right. Problem number one or strategy number one, how to use or view unique metrics such as tacos over a certain period of time. Now, tacos is something interesting that, you know, is not a metric that's in seller central. And that means like your total a cost. All right. So how does your, um, advertising spend relate to your total sales, right? So, you know, one the way to do that in Atomic is on just the dashboard. That's actually one of the key metrics here is tacos. And I like comparing different time periods. So for example, right now I'm looking at April 1 to April 16 here, and it's 12.76%. And if I just take the previous 16 days, it actually dropped uh, over 10%. You, you, Guys, trust me. You're going to see stuff uh, today that are like, "What are these numbers, Bradley? Your your uh, your PPC skills suck." But no, I don't suck that bad. It's just because 
everybody at Helium 10 uses this account to kind of like do their their tests and things like that. And so um, that's why my, my ACOS and <laughs> my tacos are, are really bad. But anyways, this is just a simple way, guys. Compare what your metrics are, your total sales, your cost per click, your PBC sales over different time periods. It's important to know how you're doing, especially if you had a bad month like I did last month. You want to know if the changes that you've implemented are working. So make sure to uh, do that uh, time over time. Next step is how to see your PPC performance by day of week or hour of day. Now, this is interesting. Some people call this like day party. And be, and before, people were always saying this like, hey, I want to be able to pause my PPC campaigns at the times of day that doesn't work out for me. And, and they would like look at their PPC throughout the day and then make decisions based on that. That's completely wrong because that's not how PPC works. Somebody could have clicked something four days ago at 5 p.m., right? But maybe today at 8 a.m. is when they actually make the sale. Now, you might be looking at your PPC data and say, oh, man, 8 a.m. is a great time for me because look at this low A cost or whatever, right? But no, the actual click happened a few days ago at 5 p.m., all right? So I hope that makes sense. So before or if you're just looking at your Amazon data, in Seller Central, you cannot base performance by time of day if you're just looking at it live because of the attribution window. So what we have done in Atomic is take a look at over time of day or which day of week campaigns are performing well. So I'm just going to pick a campaign here, uh, the large coffin shelf uh, product targeting uh, ad because I know that's like a, a big uh, a big uh, spender for for us and then take a look i'm looking here at the last like two three months and i can see that look at this at 12 a.m to 1 a.m 1 a.m to 2 a.m i'm spending some decent chunk like actually for some reason the, the the highest chunk of sales for the day or the highest chunk of spend for the day almost and i've gotten zero sales at these times of day in two months zero sales all right Compare that to, let's just say, um, here we go, at 3 p.m., I'm getting 10% A cost, all right? Uh, here's another one. At, at From 2 to 3 a.m., well, 2, 2 p.m. and 2 a.m. sounds like it or it seems like it's a good deal. Uh, I'm spending uh, $9 on average and 7% and A cost, all right? So you can see here that different times of day perform differently. So what the fact that I haven't gotten one sale, in all this time, from this time uh, period of uh, period of time, that would show me that I need to maybe stop something. I'm not going to do ads from 12 to one. So, so this is important to think about because um, you know you could be wasting money by just keeping your PPC on all day. Now, I'm not saying you definitely are, but and I'm not saying every campaign has these gaps where like performance is bad. But start taking a look at your high spending campaigns if you have history of campaigns not doing well at certain times of day. So in this one, let's just say this is this is this is true like what what would I do? All right? So what, you know, whatever software you're using, you know, if I have like a time of day where I never get sales but crazy spend, well what I'm going to do is I want to make sure to pause perhaps that campaign during that time of day. So that's what I'm going to do here. You know, guys, click on schedules in Atomic and then uh, select the campaign. Uh, I selected that large coffin shelf product targeting campaign. And then I'm picking this time frame between 12 a.m. and 2 a.m. And I added it right here. And then I'm saying I want the status to be paused. So in other words, hey, pause this campaign from 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. Starting, let's just say starting on the 18th of April and never expire. And then hit next. All right. And then it's just going to confirm, hey, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Do you want to pause this campaign during this time of day? Absolutely, I do. I just hit launch and then it is pretty much done. All right. So again, other softwares definitely uh, do this. Um, this has been something that only Amazon sellers could do probably in the last, um, you know, like six months or less, I think is when Amazon opened this up or maybe a little bit more. But this is definitely something you guys should be thinking about to potentially save you some money if you've got some bad performance at certain times. Now, uh, strategy number four, that was number three. Strategy number four is how to see your old PPC data up to years in the past. So if you're just going into Seller Central, I think uh, you can only go like six months back. 
Now, you might have had some great months that you you, you were doing well in, in performance. You know, like if you're using Cerebro and you've got the Helium 10 Elite account, you can actually look back in history um, and see where you're ranking on sponsored ads, right? And then be like, wow, look, look at this month. I was just crushing it on, on sponsored ads, right? So this is important to, to know that you don't have access to that data in Seller Central. But if you're using Atomic, this is where I want you to go. All right, go to the analytics page and you can select any campaign you want, all right? Or just go back uh, in in time to see everything, right? So like, hey, I wanna see what was going on. I had a great month overall in a certain time frame. Let's just say, you know, April of 2021. This is like even up to two years ago, April 2021, all the way up to May 2021. And Helium 10 is going to put up that uh, data for you. All right, so guys, this is a great way to look at old performance. Like, like, oh my goodness, these campaigns were actually terrible back uh, in, in these days. But, he, but here's one, my, my, my Project X broad campaign was at 20% ACoS. So now I can see what was working for me at that time of day. This is also good, especially for if you've got a seasonal product, all right? Uh, you probably do seasonal campaigns and you want to do a look back at a year, you know, like you're not, you might not be able to, to do that unless you have downloaded that in seller central. So, you know, like for example, if, if you uh, have some products that really pop off during Christmas, uh, maybe you have some special campaigns at Christmas. Well, I'd want to look back at last year's Christmas and the previous year's Christmas to see what my campaign performance was. And then I would use that to gauge this year's. All right. So that's a strategy. Make sure to look back at your old campaigns. If your software has access to that. Uh, strategy number five here is how to instantly see if you have search terms that you should negative match. All right. So I think you guys know how to do this. Just if you're just downloading uh, Excel files, right? If you're da downloading Excel files, you just got to run, you know, some formulas and, and sort it out to, to have like minimum number of clicks or minimum spend or something like that. And then just try and find it. All right. So if you're using Atomic, here's the strategy of what you should use. And it's probably something similar in the software that you're using. I like going to the analytics page and then I hit search terms. And then what I enter um, is z PPC orders zero to zero, meaning that, hey, this is a search term that has gotten me zero orders. But uh, in the spend field, I put minimum $15. Now, this is not just like a one size fits all number. You know, maybe some of you have a different threshold you want to use or whatever. Uh, I like just doing 15. And then sure enough, I can see all of these keywords here or ASINs where um, it's been showing up as search terms, zero spend here. You know, there's a few hundred dollars worth of spend. And so what I would do is I would just negative match these. All right. Now, now theoretically speaking, I should have caught these earlier if I was doing my PPC correctly. But if you just want a quick, like if this is like day one and you've got Atomic or day one and you're downloading reports, that's the number one easiest way to save potentially hundreds of dollars is immediately stopping spend where where you're just spending hundreds of dollars potentially and you are getting no and because you're getting lots of clicks but you are getting no conversions so now on the flip side something you guys should probably do is if it's a very important keyword for your niche and you're getting lots of clicks right but no sales there's obviously some buyer intent so people are seeing something in the search results right um that makes them think that they might want your product so if you got a hundred clicks, there's buyer intent there, right? Why are they not buying it? So that might be something that you could, you know, try and figure out. But in the meantime, I'm still going to pause that target negative match it for now, or just pause a, if it's an exact uh, target match uh, to stop the bleed. And then maybe on the back end, try and figure out, okay, why, why are people not buying this after they click on it and, and trying to figure that out? And then maybe if I, if I change something, maybe, maybe I can go ahead and restart that, uh, restart that target. Now, uh, how to see in seconds if you have search terms um, that have unfavorable ACoS, all right, unfavorable. So maybe there are a couple of sales, but the ACoS is just bad, all right? So one, uh, I, I, same page, I go to my analytics page, I go to search terms, and again, you put what works for you, like what you don't want to see as far as ACoS, I'm putting a minimum 80% ACoS here, all right? And then I, I could see there's not that many here. You know, I'm kind of doing the right thing, I guess you could say. All right, so so here is here are some search terms that have come up where here's one I've spent $80, here's one I've, I've spent $50, and one of them was 80% ACoS, 140% ACoS. Now, I could do a couple of things here. 
right? I, I could just go ahead and negative match this. I'm like, hey, you know, at this A cost, you know, I'm not going to make any sales. Um, or I, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to bring this down to, to 20% a cost, but maybe you were just looking at this and you you, you did one for 50% and your target is 30%. Well, Hey, it's doable. So maybe I just right there, go in and start, uh, you know, adjusting those bids down to try and get to my target a cost. But if you just want a quick snapshot across your whole account of all of the bad a costs, then this is the, the way to do it. And of course you can do that if you're downloading reports, it just takes a little bit more time just, you know, sort it by the, you know, in your search term report, uh, sort it by the, the high A cost and try and filter those out. Like use a Excel filter in order to see what, um, what ones are over a certain spend and over a certain A cost. All right. So that is number six. Uh, strategy number seven is how to view your PPC performance by product. All right. Uh, this is something I think you now can do inside of Seller Central as of a, a couple of months ago. Uh, those of you who use Atomic, just go on the analytics page to the product tab. All right, the product tab and scroll down. It has a list of all of your products. You know, you might have five, six, seven campaigns, you know, sponsored brand, sponsored display, sponsored product, you know, broad match auto for every product. And you just uh, sometimes might want to see what is going on as far as your advertising. Like, like here, I don't even know who set this up, but uh, we have this stackable egg rack and the bottom rack, like you would never buy that by itself, you know, because it's, it's just meant to add uh, layers to your, your, the stackable egg tray, egg rack that we have. For some reason I'm running, I was running ads. So I, I got to shut this off. But I, I didn't even know I was running ads to this one. And of course, look at this a cost is 150% for this target. So I'm going to probably pause this as a, uh, as a target. And I, I want, I might want to see what are my good performing um, once here, maybe I want to see, you know what, what about by campaign, you know, so I would just hit this campaign button and now I can see all of the campaigns that a certain product is being advertised for. And this is important to understand, Hey, where is all of this spend is $4,000 of spend for this one product. What are the good performing campaigns? And sure enough, the ones that you see that are really bad are the dang test that my product team was doing to ruin my a cost here but most of the ones that i set up are, are doing pretty good like auto campaign with 20 percent a cost that's, that's pretty darn good all right so now i can go in campaign by campaign and then see what are the good performing ones and what are the ones that i might need to kind of optimize uh, a little bit more all right the next problem to solve here is how to feed newly found keywords from broad and auto campaigns to exact manual campaigns let's talk about this strategy as a whole because this might be the, one of the most important ones i've talked about today and it's something that applies to everybody it hasn't doesn't matter what software you're using but super important guys that you have a strategy to migrate or at least copy keywords from one campaign to another let's talk about why you'd want to do that all right. So if you're running, um, I always suggest running multiple campaigns, uh, multiple different uh, match types of campaigns. So a match type is how Amazon decides what keywords to show you for. If you're doing an exact manual, what we call performance campaign in Atomic, that means you, you give Amazon a keyword coffin shelf and Amazon is only technically going to show you for coffin shelf, might show you for a plural like coffin shelves or something like that. Right. That's important because I, Hey, these are the keywords I know I want to uh, show up for constantly in PPC. I want you to just, you know, show me for this keyword right now. Then you've got broad and phrase match where, Hey, let me enter the word coffin shelf. And then, you know, maybe coffin shelf decor, uh, large coffin shelf, red coffin shelf. Am, uh, Amazon will start showing you for all these others. If you have a broad or phrase match going on, the broad is very loose uh, these days. So you gotta, you gotta watch out for that. And then you have an auto campaign where you're just like, Hey, Amazon, take the wheel. And you just show me for whatever you think. Now, the reason why broad and auto are good is that Amazon can show you for keywords you're not even indexed for. And if you start getting sales for it, you're going to get indexed potentially for these keywords that you don't even have in your listing. For example, you know, like in an auto campaign, Amazon might show me for a uh, gothic bedroom, let's just say. Because whatever the algorithm is, it thinks that, uh, you know, my coffin shelf is relevant to it. Well, I can't target that in PPC myself if I don't, if I'm not indexed for it. And, and I wouldn't show up in organic search results. So this is the potential for me to show up for other keywords that I don't even have indexed. Now, here's the thing. When you have the auto campaign going, it can, sh it can sh uh, show you for ASINs, like on product targeting campaigns. It can show you for keywords. 
And then what's important is that it's just kind of like throw, you know, like think of a big bucket of water and then they just like throw it all, all over the place. It just sprays all over the place. And then we're just trying to see what, where, where it ends up this, this water. Well, if the water ends up in this one place that works out really well, you kind of want to do that purposely going forward, right? So for example, like, Hey, they're showing me for this Gothic bedroom. I get like three or four sales. That's great. I'm like, wow, you found a keyword. Well, I, I don't want to wait and cross my fingers and hope that Amazon shows me for this keyword going forward. You know, which is what happens in the auto. Cause in an auto campaign, Amazon could, should be showing you for hundreds if not thousands of different keywords and it's not doing it consistently because it's just trying to see what, what's going on, right? So in this situation, if you have good performing keywords that Amazon has discovered in a broad or auto campaign, you don't want to wait for Amazon to sh keep showing you for that. You want to tell Amazon, show me sh for this ASIN, show me for this search term 24 hours a day if possible, right? And that's why we have exact manual campaigns or performance campaigns, right? So if you're if you don't have software, you've got to download all of these like maybe every week or every couple of weeks and see what you have like maybe two or more sales on and then and then find your manual campaign that it corresponds to and then get it in there. Now that that sounds like a mouthful that is because it's a very tedious and long process. And so let me show you how to do that in uh Atomic here, all right? So what we're going to do is you are going to go here and set rules up. And this is like the core part of Atomic, guys, is setting rules. So here I'm looking at our egg tray rule set. And I have, as you can see here, uh, about five, six campaigns that I'm having all talk to each other, all right? So I've got my performance campaign. That's my exact manual campaign. I've got a sponsor display campaign. That's, you know, for, for targeting other products or other ASINs. I've got an auto campaign. I've got a um, a product targeting campaign. I've got a research campaign, which I actually have broad going. And so basically what I do is I put these all into this one rule group. And then I say, hey, and under my sponsor display uh, campaign, I put match type ASIN. What that means is, is I'm telling Amazon or I'm telling Helium 10 or Atomic Hey, if you find an ASIN, a good performing ASIN in your in the auto campaign, I want you to create the new target or suggest to me to create this new target right here in my sponsor display and in my product targeting campaign, right? Those are two different types of product targeting campaigns. And if I have an ASIN that I know is converting for me, I obviously want Amazon to be showing me for there. Same thing, my performance campaign, my research campaign. If I find something in the auto campaign, Hey, let's test it out in my broad campaign. Let's test it out in my performance campaign. So this is like game changing as far as the time that it takes you to manage your PPC. Because now all of a sudden, you know, if I start getting good performing keywords, what's going to happen is that now I, Atomic is going to give me these suggestions and say, hey, we found this keyword that hit your, um, that hit your criteria. And by the way, I didn't show it to you guys, but you also got to put what your criteria is. My personal one is I like doing if it has two conversions. I don't like doing if it has one conversion because every now and then you might get a complete fluke where where somebody hits something and then they just happen to buy your product like six days later and it has nothing to do with the original ad, right? So I like getting at least two conversions on an ASIN or a keyword and under like 40% ACOS because I, I know I could you know adjust in the future. And then if so, what Atomic is going to do as soon as that criteria happens, it's going to pop up something to me and say, hey, we you got two conversions, 35% A cost on this one keyword from this auto campaign. Do you want to put this in the manual campaign? You just hit yes or no, and then it automatically does it. That's it. One click and you're done. All right. You know, the amount of time that thing saves like that, that literally takes me three seconds to do. It would take at least, you know, maybe three minutes, if not 10 minutes just to be able to, you know, make reports and f find that and then go back to seller central, et cetera. If I really like how atomic is, is taking care of it, I can actually even put automation on and I, it takes zero seconds. I, I just say, Hey, Amazon add this to, you know, these campaigns, you know, I personally don't do automation on anything in atomic because I, um, I like to control and know exactly what's going on in my PPC and be able to just say yes or no. It only takes me a few seconds more, but but if you're just like, hey, I'm super pressed for time, I just want automation to do it, you can absolutely um, do that, all right? So really, really important. Now, uh, the last strategy for Atomic I'm gonna talk about today, and there's probably like, you know, 50 more that we can, we can do, and these are just some of the cooler ones that I wanted to bring out, 
is how to optimize your PPC campaign bids in just seconds. All right. So another thing that I put as far as my rules and atomic goes is I put it like a target a cost for my campaigns, right? And, and it really, it goes down to my target level. So I, I say, usually, um, let, let me just show you guys. Uh, for a lot of my campaigns, I, I put the target like 20%. Sometimes I put 24%. Sometimes I'll have 30%. And then basically what's, what's going to happen is on these targets that I have, if it's overperforming or underperforming, that's, that's, that's something that's important. At, uh, Atomic is going to give me suggestions. So let's say my target is 20% and I'm getting 3% ACoS. That is not time to just like jump up for joy. You might be like, oh, this is great. I must have done the right thing. If your ACoS is only 3% and you're maxing out your bid, you're probably, no, no, you're probably, you are leaving money on the table. All right. Because unless you're at the very top of the page, you know, already, uh, which by the way, Atomic links with your keyword tracker so you can see where you're showing up on the page, you know, it's not, it's, this is not good because maybe you could be doubling or tripling your sales if you increase your bid and you'd still be under your target bid. But so, so don't think that if you have this tiny number of a costs that you are just crushing the game, you're probably leaving money on the table. So if you have super low a costs, you might want to increase the bid to test. If you can get some wider reach, more impressions, higher placement, right? The flip side is what you more normally think about. Hey, my target a cost is 20%. I'm paying 40%. Well, I need to get that bid down to try and get to my target. And so that's basically what Atomic is doing is calculating based on what your ACoS is, what you might need to do. Like, for example, here's a broad match target wood egg holder. My target is 20% and it's at 44%. So it's like, hey, drop your bid 13 cents uh, in order to get a little bit closer to your target. And so if I wanted to go ahead and do that, I just hit this approve suggestion and boom it's done it, it, i don't have to go into seller central or anything here's the uh one that's the opposite good grief um here's one where my my a cost is 0 0.77 percent man that, that's pretty crazy 0 0.77 percent so in this case obviously it's telling me to increase my bid who knows maybe i can get some more some more play there here's a here's an asin one that was only four percent so again it's telling me to increase my bid and potentially I might, uh, you know, be able to get some more play. So this is uh, super, super important, guys, that you guys get these strategies done, whether you have Atomic or not. If if, if some of this stuff intrigues you and you want to, you know, check Atomic out, go to h10.me forward slash Atomic to get more information. You can add it on to any account now. Even if you have a Platinum account, you can add Atomic for, I believe it's uh, $199 a month. But, I mean, hundred, you know, what do you value your time at? Do you value your time at $50 an hour? Um, Atomic will save you more than four dollars or four dollars four hours, uh, you know, a month, guys. I mean, it saves me like probably like fifty hours a month of time. Uh, what I can do in Atomic compared to what I would have to do if I was just downloading reports. All right. Um, now let let's quickly switch over to Helium Ten follow up. All right, follow up is something that very very important. You guys need to be uh you guys need to be using this goes to all levels of helium 10 and this is for increasing your reviews all right and i guarantee you 80 percent of you probably don't even realize some of these things that you have complete access to without having to pay one cent even more right so number one how to automate the amazon request review with special time delays and other filters now this is important because the request review is what Amazon has on their order pages where you just hit the button request review and then Amazon sends a, mess, a predetermined message out. This is the easiest and safest way to get, to ask customers for review because it's 100% terms of service compliant because all you're doing is triggering an Amazon message that they have provided as a means to get reviews. So it's like this is from Amazon. So before we used to have a Chrome extension that would trigger those for you. And when that went away or that, you know, became like not used, people thought, oh, Helium 10 follow-up doesn't have that. Helium 10 follow-up is only about doing uh, emails, right? No, that, that's, that's not it. We are triggering this. And this is what I actually suggest doing. All right. So the way to do it is just go to follow-up in your account. And even like the base plans of Helium 10 have this, guys. All right. Then you go to email automation. So I'm going to hit here in email automation, new automation. And then this is the one that you guys want to pick. Send a message to request a review. This is not, oh, make a new email 
so that we can request review. Whenever you read request review inside of Helium 10, that's what it is talking about. It is talking about the Amazon request review. And uh, you add filters here. I, I like putting this discount of less than 30%. I don't want a request review going out to customers who have gotten discounts or sales or coupons or things like that. I'm, I, I like also doing it by ASIN, all right? By ASIN, um, you can do it by product name. You can do it by the, the price. You can do it by the SKU. And then you you can put here how long to wait after the order is placed for the review to go out. And then that's it. It's done. Like you set this once and then forget it, literally set and forget it. And now every single order that is from that ASIN or from that product that doesn't have a discount. Uh, and now you have to wait a certain number of times after it ships. And then the person is going to get a request, a review. So this can definitely increase your review velocity. And it's really good to put this timer on it, you know, because like if you have a supplement, I suggest waiting for like 20 or 25 days after shipment in order to send the request review because somebody needs some time to be able to know, uh, you know, to if they like the product or not, right? So, uh, it, but if you have another products like party supplies, maybe they, they, they have a party right away. Usually people who do party supplies get their stuff like kind of late in the game, right? So you want that review to go out as soon as possible. So that's why it's cool to kind of put that delay on there. But guys, that is like the easiest possible thing you can do, you need to set that up ASAP. Now, let's just say you're setting it up now and you're good because you're going to, you know, you know, you're good going forward because you're going to have all of these, you know, request reviews sent out automatically. But you're like, wait a minute, in the last month, I've got like a thousand reviews or, or a thousand reviews, a thousand pro, uh, orders I've, I've sold, a 500 orders, whatever. What do I do for all of these? Because the automatic request review is not going to start until new orders, right? Well, watch this. All you have to do is is you're going to hit orders on your follow-up page. And, and you can do this manually too at any time. Maybe you don't have request reviews set up for all your products. I go to orders, find the ones that are uh, that don't say that they have one, like a, a message queued or sent, right? Because you know you, that that's going to be for most of you guys. If you've never used follow-up, it, it won't say queued or sent for anything. And then you just copy or, or select all of them you want and just hit this button. One button, guys, request a review. All right? Like, watch. I'm going to do it for one of them right here. You guys can see how easy it is. Uh, let's go ahead and do um, this one here. And I'm just going to hit request review. Do you want to request a review for this order? And you just confirm it. All right? Now, this one I can't actually do because it's it's beyond 30 days old. But you guys can see how, how kind of easy it is. All right? So that's just a way to bulk request review orders that you don't even have an automation set up for yet. The last is to how do you check your review velocity for your products over time? All right. How do you check your review velocity for your products over time? This is something that's important because if you're requesting reviews, you kind of want to be able to know, Hey, is this, is this working? All right. So first of all, uh, at the account level on your follow-up dashboard, you'll be able to see all of your tracked product ratings. Like, look at this order rating conversion rate is 16% on all these products. All right. Because I requested 103 ratings and I actually got 11 of them uh, off of the 66 orders that were, that were delivered. So 11 out of 66. All right. Um, that's that 16%. And then if, if the, based on the number that I requested, it's about 10%. All right. Um, I could see how many reviews were requested, how many message uh, were sent, etc. If I want to keep drilling down, I would go here into the product ratings tab. All right. I hit product ratings and then I could see my, my, uh, my products here. Uh, let, let's just look at this, uh, egg tray one. All right. Or, uh, this egg rack. All right. I'm going to hit this graph right here. And this graph is going to take me to the details of what's going on on this product's reviews. So I could see my average rating. I can see how many five stars I could see in the last seven days, how many ratings I've received, how many reviews I've requested. Look at this here. I've gotten over the last 30 days, six ratings received out of 79 reviews requested. All right. That's, that's pretty dang good, right? That's almost 10% of what I asked for. I was able to get a review. Right. So, and I can see, I can graph it over time. I can see my, my review velocity over time. A lot of data here. I get, I bet you 90% of you guys didn't even realize you have access to, but this is something that we all know how important reviews are. And most of you guys are already paying for Helium 10. You don't need a diamond account for this. You don't need an elite account. 
This is on the base plan, guys. You have access to all of this information, and so it's just a no-brainer to activate this and then follow up, no pun intended, with how your follow-up is doing so that you can see uh, you know, how, how your review requests are going because maybe you want to like, maybe it's not great you know, your, your review velocity compared to how many re reviews you're requesting. So maybe you want to move that date, you know, about when you actually send the email. Maybe you want to make it slower. Maybe you want to make it faster. But start experimenting with these guys or have your team do it. All right, guys, that's it for this Seller Strategy Masterclass. We went over Atomic today. We went over follow-up. I hope you guys were able to get some benefit. Remember, most of you are using Helium 10, the few of you who aren't, I guarantee you're probably using another software that probably has similar capabilities, not as great as Helium 10, obviously, and nobody is as great as Helium 10, but whether you're not, whether even if you're not using Helium 10, make sure that your software is using these kind of strategies in your business. And if not, yeah, it might be time to make the switch over to, to Helium 10. You know, I, I rarely give out this code, but anybody who wants to switch over to Helium 10, just use SSP10, SSP10, and you'll save 10% off for life. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye now.